Hello, I'm Edith Tate of the Wacom Asset Building Coalition. Robocalls are annoying at best, but at worst, they can let a con artist into your life. The number of robocalls coming into people here in Whatcom County is skyrocketing. Experts estimate that up to half of these may be scams, but you can fight back. In this video, we'll talk about how to spot the cons coming and how you can protect yourself against these ruthless frauds. Thank you for watching and please share this video with your friends and neighbors. We have detected some suspicious activity on your computer. The reason that this call is Their plan is to control your attention and control you using any way they can. They want to get you on the phone, and they're calling from boiler rooms, studio apartments, even prison cells around the world. They want to sign you up for useless tech support or warranties, or they want to get straight into your bank account, or even mail them cash. There are two major ways they get to you. The first is the computer virus pop-up that locks up your computer and tells you to call a number for help. The second tactic is robocalls. Perhaps you've gotten calls like this one. The reason of this call is to inform you that the IRS is filing lawsuit against you. If you call back, chances are high you'll be connected to a scammer. We will refund the money from our Chase Bank to your bank, all right? This is a live 3D secure form, which you are seeing right in front of your eyes. One man has decided to do something about it. The people who just phoned you have tried to scam me but I know a few things about computers and I'm able to see what they're doing. He fights back against robocall scams and tracks frauds across the world. Can you turn your computer off as soon as you possibly can, please? He's not a detective, he's not a cybersecurity professional, but he is a tech-savvy engineer who's been turning the tables on robocallers and scammers. I, I don't know how much you bought, but just stop right $3, now. $3,000. And then he right. took my 17000 out of my account. I'm going to try and find out exactly who they are um, and eventually try to get something done about them. He's known on YouTube as Jim Browning. There he posts videos of real-time tech support scams, refund scams, IRS scams, and many other techniques used to defraud people out of their money. On his YouTube channel, he turns the tables on scammers and exposes their methods and has gained a worldwide following of more than 3 million subscribers. Yet for all the acclaim, the man is totally unknown. His name is not Jim Browning. Here's where he works, but we can't tell you where he is or show you his face, for obvious reasons. He's helped lead authorities to fraud boiler rooms, resulting in the takedown of major operations. The scammers would like nothing more than to expose him. I work at home a fair bit. I mean, I'm in an IT, I'm in an office job normally, but um, sometimes I'd be at home and I would be getting constant interrupts from these phone calls. I'm a, a network engineer, I'm a software engineer, I've worked with telecoms firms in the past, and I was thinking, if I can't do something about this, then who can? Jim began engaging the telemarketers, trying to learn their tricks. Are you in San Jose or not? Definitely, sir. Okay, can you name me one restaurant in San Jose? How long have you been doing the scamming? Sir, I'm not scamming you. You've gone very quiet. Why would that be? How can you define me that I'm a scammer? Well, you've been lying to me the whole time. He realized he could reverse engineer the scammers' methods and using their own tools, see what was on their computers. He could see their cameras too. He was literally inside their networks and he began recording videos of their computer activity and their personal computer cameras and closed circuit cameras inside the boiler rooms. He could now get a full picture of what was going on one that had never been seen before. It's really like a magician smoke and mirrors. If you have a look closely, you can see what's going on. As he watched and listened, he became even more outraged as he observed scenes like this one, where a group of scammers gather to laugh at a victim who's at the end of his rope. Suffer from depression. No, 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 sir. Everything will be okay. Don't worry, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now promise me you won't cry again, okay? He also intervenes when he can, preventing the transfer of money to the criminals. Hello? Hello, Annette. You are being scammed, okay? And this is not some random hacker. This is somebody Good trying Indian to Bandai. warn you not to move money. Banks will always say never move money because you're going to be scammed. When he comes across a swindle happening in real time, he frantically searches for a phone number to call the potential victim, hoping he can persuade them not to follow the scammer's instructions to transfer money, buy gift cards, 
or mail cash wrapped in tinfoil? Well, first we tried to transfer it. That didn't work last night, so I went and got cash. They want me to put it in a box and send it FedEx. Please, please, please do not send cash to anyone. That is your own money. That's the nice thing about it. You can't help but feel kind of thrilled that you managed to actually stop a crime from happening. As his campaign to fight robocall scams and online fraud has grown, he's been featured in media around the world. On the BBC, CBS, The New York Times, Times of India, and our own AARP Bulletin. He wants to expand the audience for his message to everyone who needs help. It's a fascinating subject. The techniques that they use, the way that they manipulate people, although it's horrible to look at sometimes, nevertheless, it's actually quite an interesting subject when you get down to it. What started as a hobby to get back at annoying phone calls has become a calling to educate everyone about these crimes. I'm hoping that eventually the channel will bring enough awareness of scams that people will recognize them almost immediately. And even if they change the the wording slightly, which they do, people will just recognize it and hang up on them. You know what? This is ridiculous. Here's an example of a case where Jim was able to intervene. Betty is a 75-year-old retiree in Florida on the line with a scammer in Kolkata, India. She's also fallen for fraud before. Now another con artist has her on the line. He tells her she's due a $399 refund from Amazon. I'm going to refund you $399, right? Right. The first step is for her to allow him to remote access to her computer. He has her fill out an online form to get her refund telling her it will be in two parts of $200 each, and she needs to enter the $200. But she must be careful not to make a mistake. In a simple word, it is an irreversible form. You cannot use the backspace key. But while she's entering $200, he's changing her screen behind the scenes on his computer to $20,000. We'll see how this is done in a minute. As he's doing this, he's buttering Betty up. You're like my granny, Miss Bessie. Do you know this? Yes. Yes, like my grandmother. Meanwhile, he now shows Betty her bank balance is $20,000 too much. The scammer pretends the problem is real and that he will lose his job due to Betty's so-called mistake. It was supposed to be a a 200 in there. And you know that $20,000 is really a big amount. The company people will, will put pressure on me. They will put pressure on me that because of your carelessness, this has happened. They're going to kick me out of the job at the end of the day. Why would but, you get but, fired? I screwed up. Is that, you didn't you make did a mistake. mistake. I did. I understand. The scammer continues to manipulate Betty's emotions. She wants to help him. Miss Bessie, I am begging in oh, front no. of you. I have no word. I'm speechless right now. After Jesus, you can be only the life savior for me. Please save my job, ma'am. If I'll not earn for my family, my family will die due to hunger, due to starvation. So what no, no, do you want me to do? Send, me send, you, Give me send a you a check? You're making me cry now. I'm getting attached to you. I'm getting emotional attached to you. Uh, me tell me how to help you. Please tell me how to help you. Just wait. The scammer suddenly comes up with the solution to their so-called problem. He tells Betty she can send back the $20,000 using a service called Zelle Transfer, similar to a method like PayPal or Venmo. Have you heard about Zelle Transfer? About what? Zelle. Zelle Transfer? No. I don't know what that Wait, is. Wait, let, let me help you out in this situation. And please, ma'am, don't panic. Just have faith in yourself and in God as well. God is great. He's going to fix each and every problem for both of us. Meanwhile, Jim Browning has been monitoring the situation and searching for Betty's phone number to warn her she's being scammed. He finally gets through. Hello? Hi, yeah, who's this? Bessie. Oh, thank goodness I've got through to you because the person Miss who Bessie? was just calling you there is trying to run Miss a scam. Bessie, are you there? Can you turn your computer off as soon as you possibly oh. can, please? I screwed up. It, it's okay. I made no, a mistake. You didn't. I put you the didn't. wrong dollar amount in for a refund on my, on my. Okay, I can assure you, you didn't mess up. That is how their scam works. They make it look as if they put money into your I account. I did though. I, no, I, I... no, actually, you didn't, and I'll explain why. And you can double check this with the bank. I will account. call but, them. Yeah. Um, okay. The I, next... I I got my 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 computer off and I won't answer the phone. If you thought changing the account balance on Betty's bank website would be difficult, Jim showed us how easy it is. Once in your account, 
The scammer can select any number and make it anything he wants from a million dollars to zero to made up text. So of course the scammers are free to do exactly what they want. Once your web page is visible to them, they can change whatever they like. They right click and they go down to something called inspect. And as soon as you do that, you get a little bit of text and I can add as much as I like. Of course, the account is not really changed. If you refresh your account web page, the real information would reappear. Betty was lucky Jim intervened. Most people never get their money back once it's sent. And there are some people in our community whose parents have lost upward of $80,000 to a scammer. Bellingham Police Lieutenant Claudia Murphy has seen these scams spread throughout her community. They come in in droves and droves and droves. The types of robocalls we see here is you can imagine just about anything and we have seen it or heard it. Bellingham residents targeted by robo scams tell Lieutenant Murphy they were afraid of what would happen if they ended the call. So many of our victims have told us I was told to stay on the phone, that I couldn't hang up, that they were watching me and that they knew I, I would hang up the phone. So I didn't. The scammers know if they're allowed to take a breath, many people will realize, wait, this is a scam. And so they keep that fight or flight going and keep that adrenaline going by continuing to make threats and frighten, which is the most despicable thing that I can think of just about when you take advantage of vulnerable people like that. While Lieutenant Murphy encourages everyone to report scams to their local police and the FTC, she says the best way to fight this crime is with awareness. What's even more important is for us to get the word out to the community and teach how to be scam savvy um, is the really important part. Aaron Foss is the founder and CEO of a company called Nomo Robo, a robocall blocking service. Nomo Robo owns over 350,000 phone lines, which enables us to monitor over 15,000 robocalls every single hour of every single day. These phone lines, which are old numbers that consumers have given up, provide Aaron with a nationwide view of the problem. He and his staff analyze the data from the calls coming into Novo Robo's lines to spot trends in scams and the sheer size of the problem. I can't think of another scam that is bigger than robocalls. So there's the standard pre-recorded message. This is the IRS. We're going to be coming and arresting you. You have to push one to speak to an agent. And that one's purely exploiting fear. I never blame the victim. These guys are really good at their job. They know the buttons to push. They know the fear button to push with robocalls. Along with the scope of the calls, Nomo Robo is able to track what tactics are emerging in particular areas of the country. There are robocallers that are targeting certain areas. New York City doesn't have as high of a population of elderly people as certain areas of Florida. And these keep on changing. So the, the robocallers know and you can absolutely see that they're targeting certain areas and certain types of phones with certain kinds of scams because again, it works. AARP is working with Nomo Robo to provide up-to-date information on robocalls coming into Washington State. At aarp.org forward slash tipoffs, you'll find examples of current calls and the most recent data. So we are super excited about zooming in onto the robocall problem at certain local levels. So take, for instance, Washington State, right? What are the number one calls coming into Seattle? What are the number one robocalls that are coming into Spokane? To make sure that people in those areas know that these are dubious products at best. Don't fall for it. Don't buy it. This is a limited time offer, and you must respond immediately. So how can we protect ourselves from being ripped off over the phone? Here are the most important tips. Don't rely on caller ID. The number on caller ID is easily faked. If you're not sure who the caller is, let it go to voicemail and take time to think about the message before you respond. Often the best thing to do is nothing. Don't hesitate to hang up any call you think might be a fraud. Consider getting a call blocking service. This can spare you many unwanted calls. If a caller or computer pop-up says there's something wrong with your computer, be skeptical. Most computer lockups can be solved by unplugging or restarting your computer and never give an unsolicited caller online remote access to your computer. And report fraud to your local police and to the FTC online at ftc.gov. We'd also like to ask you to report to our AARP Fraud Watch Network at aarp.org forward slash fraud watch network. You'll also find a wealth of information on combating all kinds of fraud on our site. 
One more resource for you is our AARP Fraud Fighter Call Center, where trained volunteers can talk with you free of charge about your fraud questions. That number is 1-877-908-3360. Remember, the best way to respond to robocalls and pop-ups is to not respond. But in the meantime, Jim Browning will be doing his best to fight back against robocall ripoffs. I always look at this as this could be my own relative and it's certainly somebody else's relative so why wouldn't I step in? I have to do it. It just I couldn't live with myself if I didn't try to do something about it. 